for a very long time and especially accelerating during the pandemic and on into 2021, hate crimes have been on a rise. This should concern you, this should be a major cause of concern. But Republicans can't have that and right wing media certainly can't have that. And so last night, Tucker Carlson, the most popular host on cable news, did a whole monologue about how hate crimes going up isn't something you should be concerned about. And in fact, the concept of hate crime is pretty stupid too. Here's an excerpt from that. Now a hate crime, by the way, is that even a real category of crime? How is it different from a crime? But it is, apparently. And it now includes something called discrimination based on gender identity. Well, no one can quite agree on what that is, but it's a crime. Dude makes millions of dollars, has an entire staff of producers and doesn't know what any word means and can't find out. But after all, he's talking about things that people study and um, work in that area. He never actually manages to book any of those people. I guess Alex Berenson took all of the spots on his show. Weird how that works. Uh, I'm gonna try to educate him a little bit though. Hate crimes have been going up and they are things. So for instance, in 2020, the US saw the highest number of hate crimes in more than 10 years, according to the FBI. Anti-black hate crimes rose nearly 40% from 2019 to the next year. Hate crimes targeting the Asian community rose by 73% in 2020 when compared with 2019's numbers. And hate crimes against Latinos surpassed 500 incidents in both years. And they do in fact come in a variety of forms. Now he's not actually interested in learning about literally any of this, but let me show our audience a little bit what some of this looks like. So there was a school board meeting in Washington that was aborted after what are called Zoom bombers interrupted a black superintendent by playing a looped recording of racial slurs. This is Dr. Sean Carey, who's a black man, superintendent, was delivering his report to the public. At least two individuals on the Zoom virtual meeting platform began playing a recording of the N-word on repeat. We have the public information officer of the district, Jessica McCartney, who said, during Dr. Carey's superintendent's report, one individual on the Zoom unmuted their microphone, displayed a picture of George Floyd and played a track with the repetitive racial slur. We were able to quickly put the individual in a waiting room. As soon as we did, another individual with their camera on, appearing to be an elderly white male, unmuted himself and played the same track. Now, these sorts of things were common on Zooms. These sorts of attacks happened to Twitch streamers as well. Uh, Tucker Carlson doesn't know about this because he doesn't know about anything that doesn't happen uh, in a place where you uh, presumably wear boat shoes or drink champagne. And he has no interest in actually finding out, but these are serious things and they are becoming more common. And why wouldn't they be? You have politicians like Donald Trump normalizing this sort of hate. Politicians like Lauren Boebert and Paul Gosar and Marjorie Green making it a daily part of our political discourse. And then you have cable hosts with audiences in the literal millions spending their entire broadcast normalizing concepts like the great replacement theory and telling people that hate crimes aren't anything they need to worry about. Yeah. What do you all think? So first on the comment about the crimes, he's like, how is this a different crime? Well, how is any crime a different crime? Like, oh, murder. Now that a crime, well, we already have crime. Why do we need murder? Why is that a different crime? Because there's lots of different crimes, and that's one of them. What a weird thing to say, but it's sophistry. But his he he knows, and unfortunately he's correct, that his audience is not that bright. So he just has to say it in a way like, oh, isn't that weird? Like, oh, now people, I guess, like chocolate ice cream. <laughs> and people go, oh yeah, that's so weird. Why do they like it? That's so dumb, oh, crazy, right? And so now, look, hate crimes though can be complicated, and I'm really curious as to Charles' opinion on this because, look, some are obvious. Somebody's getting beat down, and then racial slurs are used, and they're being beat down because they're a certain race, ethnicity, etc. That's a hate crime. But it, so that Zoom call. Now, if you just shout the N word to someone, that is not a crime. But if you do a cross burning on their lawn, that is a crime, right? And this Zoom call, well, it's somewhere in the middle. So, Charles, you know, you're a civil rights attorney and former prosecutor. What do you think? So, the hate crime legislation that we have on the books federally comes from. Uh, 1968, uh, that's where it basically originated in LBJ in the wake of and height of the civil rights movement. And so a lot of the hate crime, the model behind federal hate crimes are based on what was going on in that time. So when you look at, despite the fact that there's no federal anti-lynching law, which is a whole nother conversation. But um, when you look at 
cross burnings, for example, the reason why those are qualified as a hate crime uh, is because of the history of intimidation that is associated with them in a way that divide that uh, uh, deprives a particular group of their civil rights based off of their inclusion in a protected class. That is the legal framework how of how hate crimes actually operates and how hate crime legislation operates. Now, the question is going to become in a case like this uh, with respect to the recording, does that rise to the level of intimidation in such a way that it would deprive the speaker or some attendee of their federal protect federally protected civil rights on the basis of a protected class, their membership in a protected class, in this case, race. I think an argument can be made in that respect. I don't know how hard you would push as a prosecutor, but that is the framework that you have to apply in order to get to a conviction in a case like this. As far as Tucker is concerned, as you said, Jake, he knows good and well what he's doing. He knows good and well who he's talking to. And he knows good and well the answers to the questions that he purports to be so confused about. And it's dangerous that he continues to manipulate his audiences in this way. But he knows what he's doing. And at the end of the day, this is something that he's pretty much decided to hang his hat on. Despite the fact that we have already seen how dangerous this can become once it actually manifests. Yeah. Yeah, and and so I, I want to build on that cross burning example because the the reason is you're terrorizing that family and you are implying an assault, right? It, it, assault doesn't have to be hitting someone; it could be threatening to hit someone. And you're saying, hey, now if you step one more step out of bounds, we're going to do massive physical violence towards you. And they did. Uh, I, I read up on this recently, and and because you know all the stuff that we were taught was so whitewashed when we were growing up. I, you know, when I grew up, I had a, a, a sense that there were, a, you know, some lynchings. And I, if you had made me guess back in high school based on what we were taught, I probably would have guessed that there was a couple of dozen lynchings. If you told me a couple hundred, I'd have been surprised. And it turns out there was tens of thousands of lynchings. They did it all the time, nonstop, for things as such as he was sassing me. Uh, he looked the wrong way. I mean, you guys all know about Emmett Till, but you have no idea the regularity with which they would string people up. And governors would attend, mayors would attend, senators would attend. They'd do a picnic. 15,000 people would sometimes attend ceremonial lynchings, okay? So when you burned a cross, it was a sign you are in massive physical danger, right? Now, these days, they say, look, remember, I got self-defense. You you pissed me off at all, okay? And you, you know, and I got even the thinnest excuse. People are shooting people and getting away with it all the time. And this is not one person saying one thing in the heat of the moment. This was planned. It was two different people, and it was meant to intimidate this superintendent. And just for one second, if you're on the other side, if you're on the right wing, can you just not empathize with that guy? What else does he have to do? He has a PhD. He's a superintendent, he's successful, he's everything. But it doesn't matter to them, he's just an N word. And they're gonna let him know. And remember, they've been showing up to school boards and threatening violence over and over again. So in that context, when they say, "Oh yeah, now get a load of this, it starts to get to the point where we're worried that it, it's, it's the modern day version of a cross burn. And we're we're unfortunately way over. I just want to make one last point, though. Um, so, as Charles said, he he knows that these things exist. He knows that they're becoming more common. He doesn't care because they don't target people like him. Uh, generally, they don't target white people. Although, if there is a crime that they think that they can spin, irregardless of evidence, into being some sort of anti-white crime, suddenly they're worried about racial hatred briefly. Um, but he doesn't, and he certainly isn't worried on class terms. No one's going to even get to him. Uh, but we know that uh, uh, Asian Americans have been targeted throughout this entire thing, uh, increasingly so, attacked on the streets. Nope, don't worry about that. It certainly doesn't count because they're not white. Um, just yesterday, take a look at this tweet. Someone threw an explosive device at the Islamic Center of Olympia. That was the third mosque targeted just in that state in the past few months. That definitely doesn't count because they're Muslim and he doesn't give a damn about that entire community. But I also want you to bear in mind that there's supposed to be a couple of very specific groups that they pretend to care about that are not like them. So when a synagogue gets shot up, 
that presumably isn't worthy of any special attention. Because then we'd be acknowledging that there are hate crimes against people who are Jewish. That there are anti-Semites out there, violent anti-Semites who are targeting Jewish individuals. We see that in the UK this week as well. And so the ideology that he is preaching to millions of people every night includes, if all of the rest of this doesn't bother you, and he would prefer that it not, that you also cannot care about anti-Semitic hate crimes, violence, attempted murder, attempted arson, all of those sorts of things. But for some reason that just gets lost in the wash. And nobody is claiming that what he is preaching is anti-Semitic when he tells you to turn a blind eye to those sorts of attacks becoming increasingly common as well. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.